Hi, this is your host, Apnu Bhartia, and welcome to another episode of TFL. Let's talk, and today we have with us once again, David Williams, SVP of Marketing Strategy at Kali. David, it's great to have you on the show again. It's great to be here again, Spot. Talk a bit about, you know, uh, what kind of trends, what kind of developments you are seeing in the market, especially in this uh, kind of uncertain economic uh, situation. A lot of companies are looking at cost cutting, you know, uh, layoffs are happening. There's a war going on in Europe. Uh, everything can happen. Security is something that cannot be compromised with the change. But, you know, there are different ground realities. So I want to hear your opinion to 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 to, to talk about where things are in the present context. Absolutely. Um, I think when everybody came into the end of last year with the 2023 horizon was pretty uncertain for everybody that was looking at investments. And uh, that goes from the companies that deliver the software to the obviously the massive amount of consumers that use it. Um, what we've seen is is a is a drive for change. I think that when crisis is coming from multiple directions and the uncertainty of the market conditions doesn't enable you to plan with any great deal of certainty, then a lot of decisions get made which wouldn't normally get made that quickly. So, for example organizational uh, changes, uh, changes in technology, uh, how it's applied. Um, those sort of things are accelerated a little bit quicker than they would do when everything's fine and happy. So I think that from us, when it comes to infrastructure, I think the main thing is that people are really lacking visibility. So the first thing is they want to do all these changes, but they don't understand how infrastructure is being utilized. And I think that that's really due to the fact that Cloud resources have always been fairly low cost, at least at a point of entry. Um, continuous software delivery pipelines has uh, really been a, a major initiative, but it's also created a level of um, self-supporting infrastructure requirements. So you can, as a developer, you can build what you need without too many restrictions in regard to what infrastructure you're using and what type of tools you're using to provision it. Um, so all these things amount up to what is going on? Who is using what? How can I optimize if I can't understand what I'm using? And how do I plan with any degree of certainty in regards to um, how do I manage my security and how do I plan my costs? Those are the things that are really driving a lot of the conversations that we're having. Thanks for going into detail and explaining that. Now, when we look at risk, uh, they can come in so many different forms. We had this discussion. I mean, just look at an example of FAA, you know, uh, bugs can be there, misconfiguration can be there, wrong uh, line of code can be there. And now we are also kind of, you, you touched upon the cultural shift where, uh, of course, the fact is that as much as we like to break down silo, there are some fields which are expertise, security is, you know, there will always be security folks. They specialize in that area. This is not an area that anybody can deal with. So we do talk about DevSecOps in their space and there are other security, you know, uh, personas as well. Uh, but as developers are becoming responsible for the whole, you know, life cycle of their application, talk a bit about uh, how it is changing the landscape of security because you do have to think about a lot of things culturally as well. Uh, and uh, are there things that you are either worried about, hey, this is not the right trend, or you're like, you know what, I think we are moving in the right direction with these cultural changes. Yeah, I think the security is something that has been done um, by the teams. So organizations have built their security practices around infrastructure specific to either a cloud user, a cloud provider, or a an application you need to deliver. So to be honest, it's fairly fragmented. What we're seeing is that infrastructure access the different types of policies that people are using. So when you provision infrastructure, the way uh, you tag things, uh, track resources, understand what is uh, what is being used by who. So not all the policies are being adhered to. So even though you might have an open policy agent strategy where everybody uses a consistent type of uh, security, the way that it's used is not consistent. So for example, security, and, and uh, resource uh, tracking are very similar in the way that you do it. You tag them, you track them, you make sure that the policies are in there in a consistent way, you make sure you're tagging, but all these things are fairly fragmented. So if you and I were basically uh, building some infrastructure, the way with which I would meet my policies that I believe are important and the way that I would tag resources may be different the way you do it. It might be a different order, it may be a different execution list, but it may be different. And what I'm saying is, is that when you want to look at a holistic view of how vulnerable am I at this very moment in time in regards to the infrastructure I'm using, to be able to pull that together 
in a way that makes sense as infrastructure is used prolifically through multiple pipelines by multiple people, it's just a very difficult task. So I think it's really consistency is key, um, an ability to be able to help developers and, and, and creators of infrastructure build the infrastructure, but with the resources behind it, the technology behind it that enables you to implement policy easily. So it has your back. So you don't need to worry about you know doing everything yourself, that the policies that you're using within the tooling the tooling actually makes sure that those things are being adhered to. So it gives you the freedom to build the infrastructure and know that the policies are consistent and the way that you tag is consistent. These days, we are talking a lot about platform engineering where companies are uh, organizations are building platform internally, which can be used internally. So, so talk a bit about uh, uh, when we talk about platform engineering, what are the security implications around that? Are organizations really looking at it that from that perspective, or at this stage, they are more focused on platform engineering and we're saying security is an afterthought. Well, it's really weird with platform engineering. That's in, uh, when you look at the platform engineering, especially when you look at what the analysts are saying, the gartners of the world, they're really looking at a way with which you can interact with the infrastructure in a consistent way. So what they're really trying to do here is make sure that all the, um, the policies, the security, the ability to interoperate with different uh, resources, cloud different clouds, um, and also obviously the different technologies that support it. They're really saying if you can manage it in a consistent way, that everybody can interact with the infrastructure in a normalized way that also has all these mandates in it that says, these are the policy engines um, and that this is how you should do things. That's a really nice approach, but we've seen this before. You know, the, the idea of the market is that in times of when you've got the luxury to choose your technology, it's best of breed. I will use whatever the technology and the platforms I want uh, at that moment in time, but it creates fragmentation. So to summarize, what Gartner and companies like that are really saying is one, that they want to be able to see a more consolidated point of control for specific practices. So infrastructure as is seen to be a united or a uniform way of delivering it. And the second thing is obviously it comes with the policies and everything that you need to apply to that in a consistent way. But by saying that, it requires a different type of technology. It's not something that you can adapt from multiple uh, islands of automation that exist today. So it really requires a, a technology that no longer just gets the orchestration, because that's what some people think about. They think, oh, I'll put a layer above it and it will integrate with everything. But you're not removing anything. You're not dealing with the underlying issue. You're purely making it uh, uh, islands of automation that happens to be now hierarchied. So really what you want to do is have a technology that can consume what you're using already with the processes, but provide the, uh, the development organization, the creators of infrastructure with an, a way that they can interoperate with it in a seamless, frictionless way. So platform engineering is a nice way of looking at it, but you really want to make sure that infrastructure becomes part of your overall engineering platform. So if you're using an IDP or you're using something that you, you go to every day, infrastructure should be pull down options within your IDP. It shouldn't be another platform that you have to go to and modify. It should be like breathing in and out. If I'm developing, I want to be able to test. I want to be able to create. I want to be able to build. I want to be able to pull the infrastructure in. And that's what I think about when I see platform engineering. Thank you for taking that question. Now, let's also talk about the the the. the the reality is that you know we can talk about technology, but most of us, or almost all of us, we are running a business. So let's also talk about the business value or the business gain from you know when you look at managing your infrastructure, or when you look at platform engineering, or you're looking at you know the mitigating risks that might be associated with a lot of things. So that it's not just you know doing certain things because we have to do them. Right. It's, it's really cool. When we talk to customers that uh, are using infrastructure, typically they don't see infrastructure as a business value item. So what I'm saying by that is that if you're really going to do, have a platform that delivers all these wonderful capabilities, subsuming the underlying um, uh, existing tooling, so all the files that you have integrated with your Git. So you look at the Git, find out what the files are, pull them out, make that normalized. So you're now managing it from a consistent view. That's all wonderful. But the problem is, is that that doesn't address the problem that the business is trying to solve, which is what is the cost of infrastructure? When you do all this wonderful stuff, how do I capture the purpose? So I'll give you an example of, if I have a pipeline of activity 
most people that do cost management or risk analysis will look at it from a very much production view. They look at it as a, as a more static environment. The problem is to the left of that equation, the continuous delivery process, you might be provisioning infrastructure 20 times before it actually gets to a point where you commit and release it into production. So what I'm saying is, is that those 20 instances are treated separately if you look at it in that way. When people look at their bill that they get from cloud, they see 20 instances of cloud usage. They don't see 20 instances of cloud usage that adhere to a business outcome purpose that enables people to be able to go, I now understand why all these things are happening. I understand how the infrastructure is being leveraged. And now I can optimize what I use. I can adjust what I use. I can be more nimble because when I, I know what's being used, I can then prioritize it. So if you and I are developing you know, technology and we're using infrastructure, what you do may be more important than what I do. But unless you're looking at it from the lens of the business, then you're not going to understand that. So really what these, these uh, platforms should uh, be doing is also capturing that information and putting purpose to each time the infrastructure is being used and the ability to group it is really important. And that goes for both the costing and the risk. I want to understand my overall risk. And the 20 instances, what were those? How compliant were they? Did change get tracked every single time? So really, that's really what you want to be able to do is if you assign purpose to the infrastructure activity and you're looking at it from an end-to-end -end perspective by grouping all the instances, then you get a much better view on how to, one, make things more secure and see where your weaknesses are. And two, it gives the business the ability to understand why they're spending the money and not wait for that long, tedious process of getting the bill and working out why it's so high. How much awareness do you see is already there about this topic? Uh, you know, and uh, once again, as I asked earlier, that uh, the trends that are seeing, but those trends were more in the cultural, because uh, as we talked about, the teams are getting smaller. Sometimes companies, they get over and build with new terms. Hey, we have to use Kubernetes. Everybody's using Kubernetes. We have to move to cloud. Everybody's, oh, we should uh, explore platform engineering, but it should not start with the solution. It st should start with the question, hey, do we need a platform? Do we need Kubernetes? So so what are you seeing in the in the space today? When you get Kubernetes or you've got containers of any description, I think the challenge that a lot of companies have is that infrastructure's got a long tail. What I mean that is that it has a lot of technical debt. So what you develop today on containers has typically come from virtualization, which has come from a different iteration of, of infrastructure. So from all the way from physical all the way through serverless, there's different types of infrastructure being delivered with containers, Kubernetes, and the way that they're delivered. So what I'm saying is, is that if you've got the ability to be able to subsume lots of different file formats that do virtualization, containerization, um, cloud enablement, all these pieces, IAC, infrastructure as code, everything as code, what you want to be able to do is make sure that all these things are subsumed in a consistent way. So it automatically normalizes, if you like, the layers. So it says, this is what I'm using for containers across all my development teams. I understand it because I've now got a uniform view that I now understand how they're actually using it. And I think the biggest, and this is the sort of thing that they look for in the platform, but it can't be... There is a level of skepticism because it can't, a, a platform cannot dictate a change in massive change in process. It cannot be an added layer of abstraction. It's got to remove something, simplify that, normalize it, make it easier to use. And it really can't demand you have more skills and training. It's got to leverage the skills you have because people are very rare that have full infrastructure stack. And as I say, the, uh, the technical debt means you have to have um, a visibility on infrastructure as it was yesterday, as you're still using it, what it is today, as you're currently using it, and strategically where you're going with it. It's got to be strategically implemented that way. And a platform can't be just an iteration of time or focused on one specific thing. So containerization, absolutely. But there's lots of things that go in it, the application, the middleware, the tools that you're using. So you've got to really look at it like an environment, less like a container. It's a container that contributes to the environment that you're building and that might move to a serverless environment, but you've got to make sure that these things are tracked in the platform consistently. So as I say, the biggest danger I think most people have is when they look at the new technologies and they implement an automation technology that does infrastructure, it creates yet another island. And that's why, as I say, the platform engineering approach is something that not only should make it easier to use, but also should make it um, a bit more focused on the 
different types of infrastructure that your corporation may be using. Otherwise, as I say, you're creating an island. David, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, talk about this topic. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show, but let's make sure that there's not so much gap between our uh, discussions. I always love talking to you. It's, uh, it's fun. It's a great way to end the week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And, you know, I, um, I really appreciate your kind words. And as I said, you know, I would love to have you back on the show soon. Thank you. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.